Hello. All right, let's check out this. I did my haul video, and now we want to check out our craft club, right? I got the binder with it this time, so we will also, after I'm done using this, see how we can get everything in the binder and get it all to fit. And I got to see how far. Okay, I need to come up a little bit. Okay, so, we always, of course, get their ideas in the instructions, and so, I don't see why we can't just start, um, So, they're just showing that you can do the outline, you can do the uh, frame and the inside parts to get your two pieces, um, not two pieces, that makes it cut one butterfly. You could do two outers and add the, the um, top to the bottom. If you put a second one on, you can then flutter it. So let's go ahead and let's start with that. Let's get the die. Let's find the butterfly. And we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. And we just need some of the small colored card because it's a small. Okay. So I'm going to do my butterfly in the red or dark pink or I don't know what color they're calling it. And I'm going to do the outline. I'm just going to do one. I'm not doing two. I'm going to use my marquee, so I need my marquee folder, of course, so here's the, uh oh, of course, it f popped out and fell to the floor. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. So you get just the background butterfly. And that's even smaller than I thought it was going to be. Okay. And then they use white. Let's use a different... Well, we could use white, I guess. Um... Cardstock panels. That will be this. So what you do is you put this in here and this in here. And then you tape it. Do tape it. Do definitely tape it. I'm going to have to do two of these, so I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to get, a lot of times I don't tape it, and that's wrong. You might as well just tape it. Then you're not taking a chance of messing up your die or your machine. Um... Just tape it. Safer. Sometimes I have it slip on me, and then I'm having to go back and go back, and it ends up taking longer than what it would just take if I had just taped it. Okay? So I've got it taped one inside the other. You could also go ahead and cut the background 
I'll show you the other way right now. As soon as I'm done with this one, I want to make one more. So the other way to do that would be... Hang on. Just got to get this out of here. Okay. So there is one butterfly with the outline in there. Now the other way to do it would be to cut this out. Right. Just cut your bottom layer. And this is all about what works for you. Well, darn. Can't get that back on there right. But. And then this should be... You want that cleaned out. You don't want to leave those on there. Ooh. So I was just kind of dropping it, cleaned it right out. So now you take this on here and tape it where you think it should be. And now you run this through. Of course, you're running it through two times. A lot of places, a lot of companies, a lot of people would tell you to do it this way every time, each and every time. They tell you, do not run two dice through at the same time. Some companies, some people, some, you know, that's what they're going to tell you no matter what. In their opinion, you should never run two dice through at the same time. So, it is safer that way. So, what they've done now is they've taken, let me find my glue because it's been a while since I've been here. Okay, here we go. It's been sitting a week. There's a little bit of hardened glue on the tip, but let's see what happens if I take this off. Is my glue going to come straight out? And yes, it is. Okay, so the first one, we are just going to... glue down flat some of this stuff that they're teaching in this is very basic but there's nothing wrong with that right you can learn the correct way and then with this one all you're going to glue down is the outline of the body. And that's it. And now you have a butterfly with the wings. I do want to show you no no outside cutting okay so that will take care of the butterfly I'm trying to find how it goes on here because I can 
cannot. There we go. Okay. Got it. Okay, the next technique. Here they just cut it out of paper. That's very simple, and then you put another color behind it. Very cute. Shall we do it? Okay, let's go ahead. Let's just do, it says to stamp your sentiment. Um, clear your stamps. Stamp the sentiments. Which sentiment? Sent with love. Uh, yeah, really need a, ink, a stamping block. This is kind of big for it. You're really not supposed to. Use such a big block. I got my gold color pad. Okay. And um, I'm just going to stamp Sent with Love. Right there, beautiful. That turned out really nice. That's stamped. I don't know if that was the ink or what, but right off the bat, the very first time with a brand new, of course it's just words, so that's probably why it just went so easy. Okay, and then they take the inside die. Because if you use the outside die, it's going to cut the whole thing out. I'm going to make sure I got all these out of here. Right, so we're just going to take the inside die. Some of these didn't get cleaned out. Okay, and we're just going to put that there, and you can, of course, tape it wherever you want it to be. And then, when you lift it out. Just dropping my, just dropping it, not slamming it, not banging it, just a drop. And most of them come out. Not all of them, but most of them. Okay, so now we have this. And so let's bring this scrap in here to go behind. Let me just go ahead and cut that little piece off of there. So there, just glue it on. So in these instances, I don't want to over glue it, but you gotta have glue around the butterfly. So I just do that and then I come in and I don't want glue coming out of the butterfly. I don't want to 
my edge is loose, so that's just a good way to do it. Put glue around, butterfly, and around the edges of the paper. And then just hold it. And then if you can see, they just built it with layers. They used the frame, dies. There was a frame in there, right? I believe there was, but anyways. And they just did layers and built it up. Now you could do that. And also, you could use this butterfly somewhere on that same cart, right? Okay, then the next one is to cutting a creative card die into a card front. So, you take a five and a half by a five and a half card blank. Let's see where the card blanks are. Card blank. These are stamps. That's for stamps. I'm just trying to keep this all together nicely. It makes it easier to use for this right now. Um, cardstock panels. This is the dies. Card blanks. So it's saying to take a 5x5 five five card blank. And of course, if I do this, I have to take it to a big machine. I cannot use it in the marquee. So using the large create a card die and without the outer frame cut into the front of your card base to create an aperture. Okay, so what that means, do not use the outside part here. They're using the inside part. Okay. So you set it there and you send it through this way, just like that. And then you end up with, oh, they're not really showing you. Oh yeah, with your aperture in here, just the aperture. Then you use the same one and make a frame. Then they want you to make the smaller frame, which is that one. Then you put them all together, you layer them up, and then you have to do this to get your bear. So, do I want to show you all of that? How long is this? No, I'm not going to show you that right now. Maybe in another video we can work on that. Right now I'm more interested in showing like how you do the bear. Um, this is a box. They're just decorating it. See, they're showing how to do the side of the bear. So, I would really rather work on the bear. So, that's what we're going to... Wait. Didn't we get... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. I'm going to... I'm thinking, didn't we get the bear die? Yes. They're hidden in here. So first thing I'm going to do is I need, I use this, might be big enough, I believe. Let me find the stamps. Yeah, this is going to have to be big enough because there's no way. Okay, we're going to stamp our little bear. So I'm going to 
going to stamp the little bear. Right? Stamp him. Oh, turned out very good. This must be a pretty good stamp pad. All oh, this stuff keeps turning out pretty good. Okay. So, <coughs> now our bear is stamped out. And we're going to take the little dice that are hiding in here. And we're going to put them up against him. There's half. And you can see this is not easy. With these half stamps or half dies it makes it a little bit more difficult and you have to figure out about where it's going to be even and then I'm going to tape it hopefully that stays on and then this one goes right up but up right up with that other one but now you have to be careful because it cannot overlap right we talked about that it will ruin your machine um or your dies or both just not good now, if you wanted to make an aperture, you could do that. The problem is you don't know because it's two pieces that the aperture is going to be correct the second time. So you really just got to kind of look, and I can see mine are not even, right? So this needs to go up and over here. And then this one also needs to go. Now see, I went too far that time. So I'm gonna try by using this here. And that might have in the answer, use the little feet wedge thing as your middle ground. And then, let's see, that doesn't help with height. That just helps with middle. Okay, and then that one will go there, and I'll cut him out. Now you think, that's nuts. Why did they make him that way? Why would they make that die like that? And I'm going to show you when I'm done with this, why they do that. Okay, so now... I have my little bear and he still has some joint spots that means I didn't get close enough but it's not a big deal because you're just gonna come along and snip it 
See, this here was a lot closer and a lot easier to snip. So there he is, and you can see I'm way over to one side. Even though I used that, nothing wrong with giving it a little trim other than it takes away that die cut look. And I love the die cut look, so you normally you're not going to see me doing this. But I just wanted to take a little bit off. So there you go. Now, why do they do this? Why do they give us two pieces? Here's why they give us two pieces. Let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. Um, this can go back. Unless we end up making that, but I don't think so. Um, I'll just use one of these. So let's just say that this is card size. I'm not going to do it really card size. Because I want to be able to put it through the marquee. So I'm going to make a miniature version of it. I have my card and it's folded in half. And I'm going to take this. And I'm going to set this in the center. Usually you'll figure out where you want them. And you can put a line so that you line it up, okay? But I'm not doing that. I'm just putting it on. I'm not over far enough. Okay, so there you go. You undo your fold, right? You're using a big tray, a big card, and you come and you run it through your die cutting machine. And you take your scissors and you snip up to one side and you snip to the other side. And now you have the outline of the little bear. Oh. Wait a minute. We're not done. <coughs> because we're making him ineligible. But you do got to be able to know what it is, right? Maybe you don't know that's a bear. Maybe it's a bouquet of flowers or something and you don't know. So we got to stamp it. But here's where... There's a thing a lot of people are saying. Do you stamp first or die cut first? Well, for me, this one is the one where you die cut first for sure. And you really want... Oh, I chose some bad color combinations here. And I surely cannot see. So I'm just going to put him that over. I can't tell. I can't tell if I had it lined up right, so let's hope I did. Not bad. Could have been a little up and a little more over, but not too bad. So then, if it's regular card size, this is just an edge of the card. And you have the rest of the front and your inside of the card. And that would be like an edgeable. And I think that's why we got this little bear like we did. And they had those over the edge. 
animals and but if you're new to crafters companion you might not have ever seen those over the edges and they are so cute but I don't think they have those anymore I don't think um Where's the other thing? So these were over on the edges, not even together the way they have them on this sheet. It's just hmm. Ah, oh, here we go. There, in there. So you might not even notice them in here, but they are here to die cut the little bear out. Now what else do they have? So we did the little bear. And then they did a box. And they used the frame edgeable around a box lid. So they're also because these are edgeables. You put them up along an edge and they leave these patterns. And that's what they're showing here is that. And then the gatefold card, that's kind of where they're showing the bear, but they used a gatefold card with the bear. But let me show you how these edgeables work. And like I said, I'm sure most of you already know this stuff. Um, but just in case you don't, for anybody who doesn't, I'm going to use this. It's not quite big enough. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Can I? Nope. Not, not too big, too big, too big. Let's see what I have. This is just some background stuff that I made one day, and I did do it on a video. And ooh, almost about perfect on there, but a little bit longer. So you line it up where you want it, and you tape it down. And you run it through. And it works the same way with all of these. This is just more detailed. These are just going to leave you just that outline. Just that design. And of course, like I said, with the bear, it's going to leave you the bear. With this one, it's going to leave you this design that you can see right here in just one second. Now I have personally never had a problem with Crafter's Companion dies, and I really don't think I could even think of anybody who has said they have also. So the only thing about these edible dies like this one that I'm using here. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Where's the die? Here it is. Okay. The only thing about this is it's got a cutting line here and a cutting line here. So if you need to extend this design farther you have to take that into account 
because that much of it is going to be cut off already. So I don't know how you could do that. These you could do, you know, a little piece here, a little piece there or whatever. But this one, I just don't know how you would work around it. So you kind of stuck with the size that it is. But is that cute? Let me see if I can put some color behind it. That doesn't show up very well. Isn't that funny? These colors are kind of like the colors I used on this background. So there it is. That's the design. It's very cute, but it needs to be small. Unless you want that little bit of space. I did have to trim, but there's still, you can see on the die, there's that much, that much. That That's cut in just a straight line. But that's cute. Okay, let's see. And they did the gate fold with the... So, I honestly don't know how they did. They cut it out... I think he just got glued on halfway. That's what it looks like. Okay, and let's see. Edgeable on a card base. So you basically, the, you're just using the edge on your card base instead of, instead of an extra piece of card like this, you would just take your card base And cut it, and you can go through both, or just one simple. And then layering butterflies. We already layered our butterflies. So it's, yeah, it's just the one layer. It's not even the one with the leaf or the wings floating up. Here's where they showed how they did off the edge character. That's what they called him. Mats and layers with create a card. So here they're just using these frames and getting different mats and layers with it because it's going to come out different. I don't know how to explain it. This is all cutting, so it doesn't say it is. It's just going to cut out the aperture unless you put those in but I don't really want to go into that right now because okay and then it does leaf dies and then you take the flowers so you cut some leaves cut some flowers um add ink or whatever to color it and then decorate the card and there you have it so I definitely, though, wanted to cover the bear in this video because the dyes are almost, you don't even realize they're there with the frame and everything there. So, let's see. Yeah, that's kind of long already for the video, so I don't want to do another technique I mean it would take probably too long and I could do another technique but I still wanted to try to get um, during this video get the stuff put in colored card 
is this? That must be. That's pretty small, though. Clear stamps. I want to make sure I have all of them. Card blanks. Get my card blanks. Get them in here. I want to put it all back in their envelope so that um, we can put it away with the right amount. Cardstock panels and dies. And it's going to go in, in, in. Okay. And we're going to stick all of this in the bag. Close up my glue, because I can't believe that didn't dry up or nothing. Oh, I got to be able to see. Uh-oh. pulled it out it was fine but I guess where I peeled some of that off I must have pulled some of it up also so I got all of these in here and then there should be okay you're gonna have to excuse the noise because I know this is going to Get a little loud with the crinkling. But I had to get um, the plastic off of this. So I'm going to open this. And, oh, I don't even know how this works. I did see videos, but I just do not... Remember, what is that for? Does anybody know? Is there a reason for that? Okay, this is my number four, so it's going to go in. No, I think these go in here. Now, some people say it's not strong enough. Some people say it's not thick enough. Um, and then I'm going to put this in also. So that it's very easy to go back and see what's in there. There's number four. Um, so now I want number three. That's number two. This should be number three. I think this, I think I got them backwards. This one. No, that is gilding flakes. Okay, let me see. So which one is... This is the number one. That's the number. So this must be the aquas. That must be the embossing powder. 
I'm going to take the embossing powder out. I also took, I believe I took the aqua markers out. No, they're in here. I guess I better leave them in. We want to see if it all fits. I better just leave it, right? So, I'm going to leave it. Oh, number three. All of a sudden, I just got this huge head pain. Maybe sinus pressure, I'm thinking, because I was just bending down and stuff, so it makes sense with the, all my allergies issues and going to all those different places and all the different that kind of stuff. I don't know if I'm going to know how to close this binder. Okay. The aqua marker. So the other ones are going to have to go on this side. The memory elbow is going to be number one. It is going to be tight. I can very well see that. So I want this in first. Now, how is that going to go around there? Okay, I got it. That's number one. <laughs> this is number three. I need number two in next. It's kind of nice that you have these things to separate because you can look and see what it is and then you can look and see what you might maybe need to do the kit so and then the instructions are in the kit so I like their idea it's seeing if it works the way it's supposed to. Okay, there's my four kits. Now, I guess that's supposed to lock it down. Hmm. Okay, let's see what happens when Close it up because okay, so it goes. I don't understand it. This the binding part is on the back. Not the inside metal portion. Do you see what I mean? Here's the inside middle. Right here. The binding is on the back of it. So is it all supposed to go to the front? That can't be right either. Oh, I see. Okay, so they all 
I don't know, I've never used this kind of a binder. But I think they all line up. And then when you fold it, okay, it folds into there. So that it's all sort of, I guess, at the front of the binder. That's a good way to explain it, maybe. And it lines up, and there it's um, the binder part. So it's holding for... Mm, I kind of have to agree with everybody, but I don't know. Let me see if I can take this out and show you what I mean. It's, it's, it needed to be like a three, three holder binder and not a two holder binder. And I don't know how to fix that. So, let me put you back in the holder. Hopefully, I don't mess this up. It's not going to hold very well. But, it seems like, do a three... A three hole binder. Oh, this came undone. <sighs> yeah. This slipped out. And now that I've opened it, the other one slipped out. I'm honest, I am going to always... That's just ripped. So I guess I have to agree with these not caring for this binder. So, if there's a way around this, if anybody knows of anything that I'm doing wrong with this, please, please, please let me know because mm, it's not holding these very well. They're just kind of falling out the bottom and whatever they want to do in here. I mean, once they're in, okay, once it's sat down on something. But if I pick this up, I'm going to have to support the bottom. That's what I'm saying, I guess. All right, if you like my videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you join me again. And being negative about the binder. I don't like being negative about the binder. But I love the kit so far. I've only got four of the new ones. And I love them. And I love the way they come more compact. So I, I do say it's a plus what they're doing. It's, it's definitely an improvement. So, all right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye now.